Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can sharpen your images using the Unsharp Mask tool in Olympus Workspace. And this is a much more powerful tool than the standard sharpening slider that most people use because it has adjustments or sliders for strength and radius and threshold. And basically this allows you to sharpen your images without adding noise. And you'll see what I mean when we start editing one of my images. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about how sharpness is done in software. And basically it's just another form of contrast, but it's only applying it to certain parts of the image where it thinks it sees an edge. So let me just demonstrate this for you real quick. So I have just a standard color bar chart here, and I'm just going to apply some contrast to it just a little bit. And you'll see how some of the reds have blended together, some of the greens, right so just remember this image now let's go over here and just apply the sharpness slider it kind of looks the same though right it's kind of blended some of the reds together some of the greens actually the greens look like they have a little bit of a line here so it applied the contrast a little bit differently but it did give you effectively the same image now let's look a little bit closer let's reset this and go over here let's punch way in and let's look at these this dark gray area and this lighter gray area and the red now when we apply contrast what it's doing is it's actually making this area a little bit darker and this area a little bit lighter hence more contrast between these two different areas however when we apply sharpness, the contrast is only applied along this edge and only for a couple of pixels on either side. It'll make one side a little bit darker and one side a little bit lighter, just like the contrast did, but only along this edge. So if I just crank this up, you'll see what I mean. Just for a few pixels on either side of where these two areas met, because the software thinks this is where an edge is in the image. Is anywhere it sees a difference in luminance or brightness or color. For example, there's a difference in color. We have red here and we have dark gray here. So what did it do? It applied a little bit of darkness here and a little bit of lightness on this side. Let's reset that. Now let's talk about the Unsharp Mask tool. The Unsharp Mask tool does the exact same thing, but it gives us a little more control over how the sharpness is applied with these various sliders. So we have a strength slider, which determines how much brighter and darker we want this edge to have. And then the radius, meaning how many pixels along this edge do we want to affect. And then we also have a threshold, which I'll come to in a minute. Now, let's just start with the strength. I'm going to increase this all the way up to 500 just for demonstration purposes. And you'll notice nothing has changed here. However, the radius, I can tell it, let's, let's affect about one pixel on either side of this edge or perceived edge. And you'll see that now we have this dark area here and this light area underneath here. But along the red area, What's actually happened here is instead of changing the brightness, it changed to the opposite color of red, which is a cyan roughly. Now, also, this is not exactly one pixel. This is, you know, it's kind of dithered a little bit to kind of smooth it out so that the sharpening looks less artificial. But that's essentially what the strength is and the radius does. So if I reduce the strength, you'll notice that the brightness or the difference in color here is reduced as well, but not the area that's affected. That's controlled by the radius. Now, if I increase the radius to three pixels, you'll notice that it's drawing this hard line for three pixels and then dithering it out a little bit. And if I exaggerate this a lot more, 
let's go to say 30 pixels so 30 pixels in either direction it's sort of dithering out that dark and light shadow or that red and cyan and you'll notice over here if we move over here to the greens and uh, blues that the opposite of green I believe is magenta so that's why this is changed here and then the opposite of blue is yellow right so that's why the green is turned yellow and that's why you have to be a little bit careful when you're using these sliders and and maybe you've been playing with it and we're getting weird effects but this is how uh the software creates a perceived sharpness between colors and between tones so let's get this back down to a normal value now let's talk about the threshold slider this is telling the software to only apply these artificial sharpness to areas that have a certain amount of difference in tone or color so you'll notice that between this light gray i'm sorry this light gray and this darker gray there's not a big difference between these two grays so if i don't want to sharpen anything that has this very light tone I can increase the threshold just a little bit. Let's try 10. And you'll notice that the sharpness effect has been reduced. Let's go up to 20. And now you can see that the, the sharpness effect has been eliminated altogether between these two grays because there's not enough difference between these two grays to apply the sharpness anymore based on this threshold level however there's still enough contrast between the red and the gray to apply the contrast or i'm sorry to yeah to apply the contrast or this artificial sharpness so if i want to get rid of the sharpness between these two all i have to do is increase this i'll probably have to go a lot further yeah i have to go to about 70 on the threshold level before it gets rid of this artificial sharpness between this gray and this red and that looks like it's almost enough to get rid of it everywhere let's go to 100 at 100 it got rid of all of it it looks like so that's what the threshold level does so if i bring it back say to 25 you'll notice that the red and the gray still have this artificial sharpness applied but these two grays do not and I can back this all the way down to zero. So hopefully that makes sense how those sliders work when you're applying strength, radius, and threshold. Uh, but let's go ahead and try this on a real image. So here's one of my girl dog, Ellie. And I shot this with my EM1 Mark III with the Olympus 75 to, uh, or it's a 75 F1.8. So one of Olympus's sharpest lens, but I shot it wide open at f1.8, so I got a very shallow depth of field. And hence the image is a little bit soft, right? So I'll do my normal thing, and I'll just crank the sharpness up to plus two here. And if I compare before and after, you might be able to tell, it might be hard in the video, that the right side is just a little bit sharper than the left side now. But we can do a little more than that, right? Using the unsharp mass, knowing what we know now. So let's turn that on. Let's start at about 250. I like to use about 250 as my starting point. And you can always increase or decrease this. Now let's start with one pixel. And these are just starting numbers. And you can see that's already sharpened it up even a little bit more, right? And that looks pretty good. But this is why there's a threshold slider. Let's look over here in the areas where there's no, not really any edges. And if I punch into 400%, you can see that applying sharpness made this smooth area, otherwise smooth area, very grainy looking. So this is where we apply the threshold. Because there's not much difference between the light green here and the dark green here. So let's go ahead and tell the software. We can probably go to about 10. Don't apply sharpening where there's really no edge, right? There's really no edge here. And that's not bad. Let's back off. 
Oops, that's too close. But you can see the eye is still very, very sharp because the threshold didn't get applied here quite as much. Maybe a little bit here in the corners where there's not a lot of difference, but definitely where the white and black hairs meet, the threshold didn't affect these areas. And I think I'll increase the pixel radius just a little bit more. Let's go about half. And you wanna do these in baby steps. And just do this to taste. I think that looks pretty good in terms of sharpness. Let's go to the other eye. Not bad. Miss focus just a little bit, but definitely the hair and everything looks a lot better. All right, now let me go ahead and I noticed that if I increase the threshold a little more, let me punch in. If I increase the threshold too much to almost completely get rid of this, this uh, grainy part, it's definitely gonna, gonna start to affect the rest of the image. So that's why you wanna be very, very subtle here. Where was I at about 12, 12 or 13, right? So to get rid of this little bit of extra noise that I see here or grain, I just apply like a standard filter to smooth it out. And hopefully you can see that, but that's a lot smoother now. And the noise filter is really good at not applying too much to the uh, edges here or where the, uh, like sharpness. It doesn't affect the sharpness too much. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's, um, let me just finish this real quick. I'm going to, cause I want to bring her eyes out. Because it was, it was a cloudy day, so the image is very flat. So let me just do a pop art. And that's too much saturation, so I'm going to kill that back. But pop art, you know, really increases the, the luminance contrast as well. And let's look at her eyes. I want to bring her eyes out even more, so I'm going to do adjust color and work with the luminance and her eyes are kind of orange so i'm going to increase the luminance here and a little bit in the red probably and then let's do some saturation as well really make those stand out a little bit in the red too all right that looks good and let's just crop it for Instagram, put that dot right on her nose, and let's compare the before and after here. And I think that looks pretty good. We increase the sharpness, so it's just a little crispier looking, right? If we punch in, we can definitely see the difference all the way around. And we really didn't increase the noise here too much. So I hope you found this video helpful in using the Unsharp Mask tool in Olympus Workspace. I think it's a very powerful tool that will help you make your images look sharper without adding a lot of noise. And uh, stay tuned because I'll be continuing to make Olympus Workspace videos and tutorials. And if you like these kinds of videos, I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. Either way, hopefully we'll see you again soon.